Chaksu unmeritam yenatas my shrigal vinamaha. Ma om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasnaya Bhutale. Shri Mahti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine. Namaste Saraguri Devi Gamanda Bhai Pacharine. Nirvishesha Shinyavari Pasyatya Devi Satayane. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Pancha Kalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Pae Vacha. Vitanam Vave Bhu Vaishnave Bhu Namahum Maha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Sri Advaita Gadakar Sivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Hari, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram, Ram. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hari Hari Hari. Hari Hari Ram, Hari Ram, 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 Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, 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 Hari Hari Hari. Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Sixth chapter, verse number 17. Yes, Maharaj. I'm going to request Lavanya because her screen is much better. Lavanya, would you please pull up 617 for us? Gita. Yes, Mataji. Yes. Uh, Guru Maharaj, may I humbly request you to kindly tilt your screen just a little bit? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, so this is the six this section here. Kind of gives us an overview of the combination of material and spiritual health. Essentially, um, these are two different categories, but somehow or other, there is some interrelationship between both of them. Maintaining spiritual health uh, and keeping a certain material regimen, which fortifies the material health, helps to practice more effectively and more efficiently uh, spiritual health. Material health consists of taking care of the body and also the subtle mind. But the subtle mind relates very much directly to spiritual health. And so you have an overlapping there. One who's suffering from material depression uh, will have a difficult time practicing spiritual life. So as we go more into the subtle areas of existence, we, set, we find that the overlapping of material and spiritual health, health uh, become more and more, uh, more and more. In other words, the overlapping becomes stronger. This verse is, um, these verses, of course, are spoken by Krishna himself to Arjuna, but he's giving a little foundation from the material perspective and how it connects to the spiritual. There is a dichotomy, just like the sun and the sunshine are the same thing, but in one sense, they're different. In another sense, they're the same. The difference is important to know, and the, sa the sameness is also important to know. So material and spiritual health 
ultimately on the highest platform of spiritual practice, material health becomes less and less forefront, becomes takes more and more a backseat where persons even who are very, very materially unwell can also be on the highest platform of spiritual practice. But that's not for all of us. <laughs> that comes at a certain stage of developed consciousness where one loses connection and attachment to the material body. So here Krishna is giving a little bit of a formula how material activities are foundational for spiritual welfare. And I'll read the verse. Yukta hara vihara sya, yukta chaita sat karmasu, yukta swapna vibhura sya, yoga bhavati dukaha. Translation He who is regulated in his habits of eating, sleeping, recreation, and work can mitigate all material pains by practicing the yoga system. Purport, extravagance in the matter of eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, which are demands of the body, can block advancement in the practice of yoga. So here, extravagance in the matter of eating, sleeping, defending, and mating, which are demands of the body, can block advancement in the practice of yoga. And that extravagance can go, um, as Krishna mentions in the previous verses, too much in one way and also too little. He also talks about too little, and that's in the previous verses. But here, it's more of it, Prabhupada talks about the excess. As far as eating is concerned, it must be regulated only when one is practiced to take to and accept prasadam sanctified food. So why do we eat food that is prashadam? Why don't we eat any other food? What is the difference between prashadam and ordinary food? Well, ordinary food is called food and uh, prashadam is called mercy. So the spiritual element enters into the foodstuffs by the contact with the Lord through a process known as archana or worship, where we accept what Krishna eats before we actually take it. In other words, um, we don't uh, accept food without first acknowledging and offering it to Krishna, person that is called prasadam. Now, Krishna when the food is offered to Krishna. That's why you see that in our temples, for those who are doing the cooking, it's important that they are second initiated. Prabhupada put that as an example. Brahminical initiation allows one to do deity worship in the sense that they can cook for the Lord and they can do on altar worship of the Lord. Others are, are, are aspiring to reach that platform. So there's a certain consciousness that comes by spiritual advancement, which is required in order to serve the Lord in that mood. And therefore, the word prashadam is a general term, but then there is prashadam and then there is prashadam. And I use that in a very uh, different way because um, the Lord will accept the bhakti that is offered in the offering and not so much the foodstuff. The foodstuff should be in the categories as Krishna also explains in the 17th chapter of Bhagavad Gita verses 8 through 10. And that food should be in the mode of goodness. And he says, uh, uh, grains, milk products, legumes, vegetables, fruits like that are food that can be prepared and offered to the Lord. And then foods that are too hot, too spicy, 
uh, prepared and left for more than three hours. Um, in the category of violence, such as killing of other living entities, specifically meat and fish cannot be offered to the Lord. So the Lord makes it specific what things can be offered and what cannot. So that's one aspect of the prashadam element. But the, the other aspect, which is very essential, is the consciousness of the cook during the time of cooking. And that consciousness has to be Krishna conscious. It has to be, in other words, it has to be done as a service to the Lord. So we will get the maximum amount of benefit from prashadam when it's offered with love and devotion. Because Krishna will be eager to accept that. Mm -hmm. Krishna is not hungry, but he does say, Patram Pushram Falam Toyam Nayomi Bhakti Panachiti Tadaham Bhakta Uparitam Asnami Payatatmanaha. He says, and Asnami means I eat. So he does eat, but he eats in the way as his acceptance of our offering. Therefore, he leaves what he, what we offered him back to us is known as prashadam. Yeah. So Prabhupada makes this point, we should, we should eat only prashadam and not just general food because that nourishes the soul. We have seen that people who sometimes are, people who are maybe sometimes inimical to spiritual life we're not interested in spiritual life. Um, somehow when they take prashadam after some time, their consciousness changes automatically by the uh, effects of prashadam. They become more favorable. Sometimes they even become devotional. Now this is the power of prashadam. You can't see it working, but it's working. That's why Prabhupada would say, as far as our preaching concern, that um, we have two weapons. We have our weapon and we have our secret weapon. Our weapon is the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and our secret weapon is prasadam. It works in such a way that the, the, the recipient is not even aware of how it's working. <laughs> so Prabhupada goes on, he says, Lord Krishna is offered according to Bhagavad Gita, vegetables, flowers, fruits, milk, grains, etc. In this way, a person in Krishna conscious becomes automatically trained not to accept food, not to accept food, not meat for human consumption, or not in the category of goodness. And so two things, nothing meat based on violence and only food in the mode of goodness. <laughs> because food in the mode of goodness is brings happiness, health, nourishment, and spiritual progress. And Prabhupada goes on to explain the next step. As far as sleep, sleeping is concerned, a Krishna conscious person is always alert in discharge of his duties in Krishna consciousness. And therefore, any unnecessary time spent sleeping is considered a great loss. Abhyarta. A Krishna conscious person cannot bear to pass a minute of his life without being engaged in the service of the Lord. Therefore, his sleeping is kept to a minimum. His ideal in this respect is Sila Rupa Goswami, who was always engaged in the service of Krishna, who could not sleep more than two hours a day and sometimes not even that. Srila Haridas Thakur would not even accept prasadam or not even sleep for a moment without finishing his daily routine of chanting with his beads 300,000 names. Hmm. So sleeping is required in order to replenish the body when the body gets worn out. Uh, a, ba a balance is needed to adjust. And so sleeping can help balance. Sometimes we say that if you're sick, one of the best remedies for sickness is fasting and resting. 
Um, fasting allows for the body to, to slow down and work in er other areas to rejuvenate. And at the same time, it um, start, it rejuvenates the body automatically by the resting period. <laughs> Some of the times we say the best way to get over some disease is fast and rest. <laughs> These two things have a way to work nicely. And of course, there may be some other things needed, but these are foundation. Even if one is taking all kinds of other forms of uh, cures for some illness without fasting and resting or diminishing a certain diet, it's like we say, like, um, this uh, COVID violence, uh, virus, uh, if you reduce your eating, get away from certain food products and uh, simplify your eating style, you'll find that as you're fighting the disease, it becomes more easier and more natural. Doctors also know this, nutritionists also know this, even Ayurveda, which is the king of all medicines, they also recommend like that a uh, slow down of certain types of foodstuffs and a uh, emphasis on more simple and more nutritious types of food. The food is important here. And the sleeping, uh, again, Prabhupada's told us that generally six hours should be sufficient in order to keep the body moving nicely. Sometimes maybe a person is working extra so maybe a little more six and a half or seven hours of sleep but that's unusual but that's there also but generally if we are enthusiastic in our krishna consciousness uh, we find that we don't even think about sleeping especially during the day which ayurveda does not recommend we do um, i remember going to ayurveda and I was telling that I usually take rest after lunch and he was telling me that, well, if you're going to do that, do it just for 20 minutes or a half hour. But it says, but uh, if you sleep too long, like an hour or more, then that can also um, diminish uh, the, the, the health of a person. Too much sleep is also detrimental to one's health. And that's proven even by medical science. So there has to be some balance like that. We also recommend, as Srila Bhaktivinoda, of course, says one should take rest by before 10 o'clock because he said every hour you sleep before minute, midnight is worth two hours after midnight. So um, there is a certain rejuvenation period. And of course, the organs are rejuvenating at certain times throughout the day. For instance, at 12 o'clock noon, uh, the heart rejuvenates. So that's a, that's a time not to do hard work is around noontime because the heart is trying to rejuvenate like that. So better to do less hard work or even relax during that time less. And the, the liver, uh, gets rid of toxins at one between one and two o'clock in the morning, like that. So people who stay up, you know, that in the mid morning they go to bed at one two o'clock in the morning. They're they're putting a strain on their health, especially the liver, which is a a form of cleansing the body. It gets rid of all of the, the toxins throughout the bloodstream and other and in other organs also. So yeah, so uh, learning the science of uh, how to take care of your health, which is foundational to the practice of Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada, you know, because Prabhupada said health is wealth. So we need to uh, see how it's connected. In this verse here, you'll see as Prabhupada explains some basic principles, he doesn't get into details, but throughout other parts of the scriptures, you'll find there's a, a lot of talk about and one of the things that destroys uh, spiritual health and material health simultaneously is ir irregular habits. Uh, just doing things according to how you feel at the time. Best to be regulated. <laughs> and uh, 
one should strive for regulation, but shouldn't be attached to regulation, follow regulation. Emergencies allow for adjustment in the regulated schedule. The regulation helps one to become efficient in the work they're doing. That means Krishna conscious activities. And at the same time, it allows the body to function according to its design, designed uh, uh, feature. In other words, the body is designed to work accordingly. And so keeping regu regulations allows that to happen. Okay, so that's a little bit about sleeping. Uh, here. Probably said, as far as work is concerned, a Krishna conscious per person does not do anything which is not connected with Krishna's interest. And thus his work is always regulated and is untainted by sense gratification. Since there is no question of sense gratification, there is no material leisure for a person in Krishna consciousness. And because he is regulated in all his work, speech, sleep, wakefulness, and other bodily activities, there's no material misery for him. Is there more to the purport? We can't see. Is that it? Uh, no, Guru Maharaj, that is it. Okay. So again, you'll see the word regulation like that. So for spiritual health, the ingredients are chanting the holy names, offering prayers to the Lord. These are done in our morning programs, but throughout the day we can also offer notable prayers at different times. We can also offer individual prayers. Prayer seems to bring the mind directly in connection with the spiritual mood. It also helps us to develop a mood of humility and dependence on the Lord, which is essential for our spiritual practice. And um, prayer opens up the heart. And there are different types of prayers. Uh, in the scriptures, it mentions there are 10 different types of prayers. And uh, I won't get into those 10 different types right now. But there are different ways to offer prayers and different kinds of prayers to offer like that. The essential prayer is to uh, pray to the Lord in order to become more uh, attached to the activities of devotional service, to be more uh, efficient in the execution of devotional service. In other words, for instance, our chanting to develop uh, prayer in order to uh, overcome the inebriates that we may experience in our chanting. That prayer brings the intervention of mercy. Bhakti Vinod Thakur recommends that in connection with our japa to pray for attentive japa. And then, of course, um, reading Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita regularly. Sri Prabhupada established these two scriptures as the foundation for our practice in Krishna consciousness. Along with that, he gave us the handbook for Krishna consciousness, which is a nectar of devotion, which is the science of bhakti explained in detail, and the step-by-step -step process of how to execute the process of bhakti. And he also gave us uh, Sri Upanishads, which are um, as supplements to these other literatures, which helps us to understand uh, the importance of certain essential principles in Krishna consciousness that are foundation to our practice in Krishna consciousness. Out of all the, the out of all of the Upanishads, there are 108 Upanishads. There are 12 main Upanishads, um, and there are Upa Upanishads, those who are the other lesser Upanishads. But out of the main Upanishads, one of the main ones is the Sri Ishu. Sri Ishu is the one that we have regularly in Prabhupada. Also gave uh, a series of lectures in Vrindavan in 1972. I believe it was in October, November 
on the, no, that was nectar devotion, but he also spoke about on Sri Yishu Upanishads in different places. So uh, these four books re are recommended for our, and Prabhupada writes in one purport in, uh, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that we must read all the books that has been printed in Krishna consciousness. And if we do not read, then we will be more inclined to eating and sleeping. And then we will lose the opportunity for transcendental happiness in Krishna consciousness. So it's important to read that nourishes the intelligence. The intelligence, when intelligence is nourished, it fuels the mind with, uh, with ideas on how to execute devotional services, it inspires us to understand things more clearly and more readily. So as we take food for the body, we also have to take food for the soul. And food for the soul is spiritual nourishment through reading Shastras. Personally, I find if I don't read Srimad Bhagavatam every day, and the next day I will feel something is lost. <laughs> so it's like we have to get addicted to coming in contact regularly with these two scriptures, Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, especially Srimad Bhagavatam, because Prabhupada has given us a very elaborate explanation of Krishna and all his different incarnations, all the way up to the highest expression of Krishna, his, his pastimes in Sri Vrindavan Dham. You, know, you can't exhaust Srimad Bhagavatam when, when uh, Prabhupada uh, was explaining to one very uh, intelligent professor from Germany, Professor Durkheim, he would, they were discussing scripture and Prabhupada talked about Bhagavatam. And uh, he said, well, yes, we have our Bhagavatam and in there, there are 18,000 verses. And it takes approximately one month to understand each verse. Okay. And then he turned to one of his disciples who was there also and said, how long is that? That's uh, one month times 18,000 verses. How long, how much time is that? And the devotee was very quick. And he said, that is 1,500 years, Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, yes, you have enough to read. <laughs> So we cannot exhaust the knowledge in Bhagavatam even in this lifetime. If even if we give it a, a regular study, it's such depth and such such uh, amazing amount of transcendental and philosophical knowledge in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So that is very essential part of our spiritual health to uh, hear Srimad Bhagavatam, to discuss Srimad Bhagavatam, and to read Srimad Bhagavatam. So, and of course, uh, for those who are in family life and who are initiated by their spiritual master, then they, one should uh, keep the mercy of the Lord at home and perform regular archana worship, deity worship is essential as Prabhupada writes in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the seventh canto that uh, if those living in Grihastha life do not uh, regularly worship the deity, then their falling down in Krishna consciousness is guaranteed. So that's a pretty strong statement. You're falling down in Krishna consciousness is guaranteed. You're living in family life and you're not worshiping the deity. Of course, if we live next to a temple, we should visit the temple regularly. Although deity worship is not the Yuga Dharma, it is supportive in a very strong way. It is part of a system called Pancharatriki. We have Bhagavad Vidhi and Pancharatriki Vidhi. And Prabhupada says these are two tr transcendental tracks on the, on the railway of Krishna consciousness. So both are important. And Bhagavad Vidhi 
can mean Srimad Bhagavatam and chanting the holy names of the Lord. Pancharatri Vidhi means following the principles of cleanliness connected with deity worship and worshiping the Lord, which purifies the consciousness and helps to develop the qualities of the mode of goodness, which are essential to the practice of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So we find the connections are there between deity worship and everything else we do. So of course, those who are not initiated um, they can uh, they can actually plan in the future to get deities and then install them. Generally, Prabhupada said Gornitya Thai deities at home are the best because they don't accept any offenses and their worship is easy. In the sense is that we we just offer our whatever food we eat to them every day, keep the area clean, do some simple puja, and ultimately have some kirtan in front of them. That is the best way to worship. Gornitai in the most uh, direct, efficient way. So this science of Krishna consciousness is what it is. It's a science. <laughs> and, and when um, eventually one has to, um, one can, if one is not initiated, then one can make an altar at home and place pictures of the Lord such as the different, the spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, um, Panchatattva or Gornitai, and various pictures like that. And that little home altar is not anything less than any other altar because the Lord appears in different forms and he uh, can accept our worship through the pictures also. We should not think the picture is any less the form of the Lord and the deity is. The only is that there are rules and regulations for the deities, which do not apply for the pictures. But the Lord is absolute. So wherever you see his form, he's there. <laughs> he's there. And that's also true for Srila Prabhupada's picture too. And there are many examples of devotees who were praying to Srila Prabhupada's picture and received guidance and instructions through this type of prayer because the picture is, for the pure devotee, is none different than the pure devotee. So for those who are not initiated, keep a little altar there nicely, keep it clean, do some simple regulated forms of worship like that. And eventually when you receive initiation, then you can... Uh, um, aspire to have home deities like that. And then there's course of deities of Jagannath, which require much more uh, diligence and worship and Radha Krishna even more. So um, uh, one should take advice, instruction, directions from their spiritual master in regards to the worship of the deity at home to get get a clear understanding of what is needed and what should be avoided like that. Okay, and so these are the principles of spiritual health, chanting the holy name, Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, worshiping the deity and um, uh, offering prayers like that. And of course, taking sanctified food as Prabhupada said, Krishna Prashadam, this is very important. It's not, we should not be uh, pushed to the side and thought of as something extraneous. Um, it's important that we eat only foodstuffs offered to the Lord. And there's simple offerings and there's more elaborate offerings, but everyone should follow the, the prayers that has been given to us by the Acharyas for the worship of the offering of the food and should be done properly in in a clean and uh, sanctified area like that. All right, so I wanted to somehow or other give a little uh, overview of spiritual health and how material activities are supportive or they take away from uh, spiritual health.
Thank you very much. Question for from Anasuya is asking a question. Um, please bring that question back up. Let's see. She just posed a question. Can you um, put it up? Like, put that question. Like Anasuya's question on the chat. Yes, Guru Maharaj, she says, Hare Krishna. No, 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 no. You just put it up. Don't read it. <laughs> put it up where, Guru Maharaj? Put it on the chat. The screen? Yeah. That's that's what it means. You, anyway, read it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and read it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there, thank you. Look. Do you recommend us taking courses online related to home deity worship? If if they're given by authorized devotees who know the process, yeah, sure. Why not? If you can gain something from that. But if there's some questions that seem to come in conflict with other things that you heard in relationship to that, then you should clarify those questions with your spiritual master. But generally we can take help from these online courses, but we have to see who's doing it and what is the nature of the, uh, what are the ingredients on that course like that. But generally, that's a that's a general principle. Yeah, why not? We can learn. But deity worship simply means regulation and cleanliness, um, especially cleanliness. Everything should be kept very clean, and that way regulation sh should go on. Simplicity is another principle for deity worship. Simple means what you can do nicely, which allows for you cleanliness and regulation. If one becomes too fancy or glorious or gorgeous in their deity worship, and then cleanliness and regulation get pushed to the side, and then that sort of overshadows the principle. So one should be simple, but uh, most important, clean and regulated. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Dear devotees, please uh, feel free to ask your questions relating to our material health and how it also impacts our spiritual health. Thank you. Well, there's a question from Dear Raj. Offering prashadam, there are the prayers. There's three prayers to the spiritual master, three prayers to Lord Chaitanya, and not three prayers. There's a prayer to the spiritual master, prayer to Lord Chaitanya, and a prayer to Lord Krishna. And each prayer is chanted three times. So we chant the spiritual master's pranam mantra three times. We chant Namo Mahavadanaya Krishna Prema Padayate Krishna Krishna Chaitanya Namani Govinda Tristina Maha three times. Then we chant Namo Brahmanya Devaya Go Brahmanya Hitaya Cha Jigaditaya Krishnaya Govindaya Namo Namaha three times. And then we chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra three times, offer our obeisances, and that is how we can offer prasadam in a very simplified way. These prayers are found within the prayer books that are available in this con. You can find those prayers there. Thank you, Guru Mara. Sudha Mataji has raised her hand. Sudha, please go ahead and ask your question. Yeah. Thank you, Mataji. Uh, Hare Krishna, uh, Dhanu Pranam Maharaj, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, um, I have a question about uh, Prasadam. Uh, Maharaj, you mentioned like one of the aspect, like, uh, uh, like Prasadam should be offered with a pure consciousness. Sorry, Mataji. 
so uh, prasadam should be offered with a pure consciousness maharaj so like uh, neophyte devotees like when we are practicing krishna consciousness we actually try to cook um, uh, with a uh, consciousness good consciousness but not really elevated but uh, we still practice um, uh, i mean uh, because uh, since we are like a new de- neophyte uh, still our consciousness is like a very good so will krishna will accept um, the prasadam i was make, there is a distinction between the cooking and the worship in the temples and at home so at home there's a little bit of more leniency in the principles because you have to eat at home but in the de- in deity worship when you have the installed deity in the temple the uh, pancharatrika system has to go on accordingly and that's why only brahminically initiated persons are allowed to cook for the deities and along with doing the pujas also um, but at home we it's not that we have to wait to get brahminically initiated before we actually perform the cooking process so the idea is keep everything clean keep it simple and try to cook in a way that is not distracting um focus yourself on the on the work you're doing and without getting distracted keep everything clean and in the best consciousness you have offer it to the lord like that yeah make keep it simple like that but temple worship is a lot different and a lot stricter <laughs> thank you maharaj so maharaj i just have like a one more confirmation is it okay can i ask maharaj Yeah, thank you maharaj uh, so maharaj like uh, eventually like when we practice like uh, offering prasadam with a low consciousness uh, and by eating that prasadam so well like eventually it will change our consciousness like uh, even though we offer it with a low consciousness there's something there but according to consciousness krishna is accepting so the, the more pure the consciousness is you should think i'm cooking for krishna I want to make it as nice as I can so I should keep it as clean have the freshest ingredients everything done nicely and um without distraction from other things going around um this these are some things which allow for consciousness to develop properly and then that's up to Krishna you'll accept accordingly like that but the more pure the offering the more more the potency of that prashadam the the potency is there but it's always in degree according to the consciousness offered okay okay mm-hmm. thank you maharaj if you follow those simple program then it's, it becomes natural and, e- and easy like that you don't want to be like uh yelling at the children while you're cooking <laughs> that's not going to work <laughs> keep them out of the kitchen if they're in the way <laughs> or or whatever in other words you want to be focused on the activity like that mm-hmm. completely focused mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you maharaj uh, very valuable instructions um yeah i tried to put like uh, some lectures and i tried to cook but still like mind is wandering but i try my best <laughs> maharaj thank you so much yeah. that's important if you try your best and krishna will take see that and putting on lectures or some very uh what we say sweet bhajans is also allows mm-hmm. for the atmosphere to improve that's good mm-hmm. i listen when i pre- i have deities and i prepare the morning offering for the deities here and i uh, listen to shila prabhupad's japa tape while i'm doing that okay mm-hmm. that's just just something i do maybe devotees might want to consider that also and then when i take prashadam i listen to prabhupad's lecture So while I'm preparing it's the japa tape and when I'm taking it's the lecture. Mm-hmm. That's me, but you can adjust 
according to how whatever you feel is best. Sure, Maharaj. So much. I'll definitely try to follow. I have one more question, Maharaj. If it's okay, I can ask. Um, uh -huh. Mm -hmm. So, Maharaj, like uh, regarding health, like uh, good health, like material health, is uh, determined by consciousness, Maharaj, or like a previous karma, like provided like you are having a you're following like a regulated lifestyle, but still like, you know, sometimes like uh, you see health crisis. So is that due to like a previous karma, Maharaj, or like uh, your consciousness? Mm, well, these two interplay. These two are, are, they overlap each other. But previous karma, there are, there are effects of health from previous karma. But they can be overshadowed by good consciousness mm -hmm. um, to some degree. But try, but if you find, if, I know devotees who, because of previous karma, have had some health crises. But somehow or other, they have to just deal with it and go on in their Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. But we always, Prabhupada was very. Uh, strong, adamant, keep good health and work hard for Krishna. That was his motto. He said it many times. Keep good health and work hard for Krishna. So to the best of our capacity, uh, keep, your, keep health up. And uh, that's why, you know, there's so much emphasis on health all around the world nowadays. Uh, because it's not easy to keep good health. <laughs> there's only, there's so many factors that can change that. But if we become careless in our regulated activities, we weaken our, we, we uh, diminish our ability to keep good health. And that has to do with our eating, our sleeping, our activities, our consciousness, everything will interplay and affect our, our, our health because the mind is actually the center of everything. If you, if when one is happy, generally, generally they're healthy, generally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so try to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> we also say that that's one of the best ways to keep good health is become happy. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much uh, for the valuable instructions. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for this uh, wonderful lecture with uh, deep questions and very in-depth answers also. Uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, personally speaking, I have suffered from clinical depression for many years, many, many years. It's been a struggle um, going back to maybe even childhood. Are there any food items or any particular preparations that one can take to offset this uh, tendency of the mind to go in the negative direction? Um, well, one of the best things to do is cook for yourself. Prabhupada said, generally you can keep good health if you, if you cook for yourself because your own energy re resonates directly with your body. That's one of the ways, rather than accepting food from the outside, unless it's coming directly from the deity in the temple. But generally cook for yourself. That's the best thing. A lot of our traveling sannyasis, sometimes they, they get sick because they're eating all kinds of diets, traveling this way and that way, and accepting foodstuffs from various types of people which we shouldn't be doing. <laughs> but sometimes because of the service, we find ourselves not. So cook for yourself is one of the 
main ways to help balance our consciousness nicely. Um, types of food. Um, everything should be done in regulation. Learn what is your, your bodily constitution, according to Ayurveda, which is the science of medicine that is given in the Vedas by Danvantari, who is a incarnation of the Lord. We people have five different types of bodies, uh, and these uh, there are three doshas: kapha, kapha, pitta, and vayu, vada. These three balance them. Find out what is your diet for your constant. First, find out your constitution and find out what is your the best diet for that that will help also give mental clarity because food will help in that direction so i i recommend the ayurvedic formula in order to find out the best diet like that and you can discuss that with your ayurvedic physician to uh, to fine tune it in such a way like I just went to an Ayurvedic doctor here. We have one here. He's from Kerala. And uh, so there was some imbalance in the doshas. So he told me, restricted me in certain areas for certain foods and emphasize other foods like that. So like that, we can learn what is our dosha, what is our, you know, what is our body type, and then take and learn to take food accordingly, like that. And that will help not only the body, but also the mind. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. All very important tips. I'm writing them down. Thank you very much. Yeah, do you have, uh, see if there's an Ayurvedic doctor available in your area? and go see them. <laughs> the devotees usually know if there's someone who is practicing. I mean, he has to be a practicing doctor, not just somebody who who's just studied Ayurveda from the book. <laughs> because an Ayurvedic doctor can take your pulse and simply tell you exactly how, what is your you know, what is your problem in your body. That's a if they can do that, then they they actually know the, they 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 know the science of Ayurveda. The pulse is the indication of the of the health of the body. <laughs> Ayurveda is the true science of of uh, health, and but in order to regenerate optimum health it takes ayurveda takes a time takes a while and it takes a regular regimen um, it takes you have to have patience when you're working with ayurveda people jump to allopathic medicine because allopathic medicine just different, deals with symptoms and they generally give you some medicine based on the symptoms and usually it relieves the symptoms, but it doesn't get to the essence of the problem. Uh, Ayurvedic, uh, allopathic medicine doesn't study body constitutions. They study mostly just symptoms like that. Getting rid of the symptoms is, seems like the disease is gone. In some sense it is. But in another sense, the root cause of the disease is not uprooted. That's where Ayurvedic can do that. Uh, so that's the that's the uh, that's the the health regimen that is there within the Vedas. It's one of the sciences. There's Dhanurveda, there's Ayurveda, there's various types of Vedas, which are all part of that knowledge, Taining Brahma Hidayadi Kabaye, the Vedas are coming from Lord Krishna, like that. 
So if you can keep good health, if you can follow Ayurvedic nicely, you can keep optimum health. But there's many factors to that. It takes in your social and physical uh, constitution and not just the symptoms that you're exhibiting or not exhibiting. It's a very subtle science where allopathic is more gross. <laughs> Solid to subtle in its diagnosis, mm -hmm. but also, uh, you know, it also has medicines. It also has general cures that are on the physical level. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj, thank you very much for the detailed explanation. Dear devotees, please come forward to ask your health uh, challenges so that we can become better devotees, we can actually become happy in our Krishna consciousness and do our best for Srila Prabhupada. It's, we're talking about combination of spiritual and material health. <laughs> Anasuya, do you have an Ayurvedic doctor that you can visit or get advice from? Uh, no, Guru Maharaj, I'm trying to find someone. Locally, there isn't anyone. So if anyone has suggestions uh, or maybe someone who can see me online, I don't know. Or, all right, well, I'll find out and then I'll send you something. But being in the Boston area, you, that's a big city and there are always, there are always some Ayurvedic uh, doctors there but if you can get one that is krishna conscious that's the best <laughs> i think there is one marge but I, I, it's also uh, sometimes very expensive <laughs> yeah it can be <laughs> i'll um i'll maybe i'll try to help you in that area thank you so much Gurmarsh. But learn your, learn your body constitution and then learn what foods work for you. That you can do yourself. Okay, Sri Devi. Uh, looks like there are no more questions, Guru Maharaj. Okay. And we've reached the hour. Thank you. Yes, Guru Maharaj. We are at 11.03 a.m. right now in um, Central Time. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, so we'll stop here and uh, we'll see everyone um, tomorrow. Um, I'm still working on a schedule for regular... Uh, topics when we'll post something very soon. Okay, thank you. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you.